In the eerie silence of the night, the beast of Bodmin Moor roars, sending chills down the spine of those who dare to listen. Emerging from the shadows of Cornwall, England, this phantom wild cat first entered our reality in 1978, and since then many have claimed to have seen it. Yet, despite the numerous eyewitness accounts, concrete evidence of its existence remains frustratingly elusive. Some propose it's a panther, lost or set free, its shadowy figure stalking the moonlit moors. Others suggest it's merely a large domestic cat, its size exaggerated by fear and the foggy English weather, but without definitive proof, these theories remain just that. Theories. And so, the beast of Bodmin Moor, this spectral feline, continues to roam freely, its true nature shrouded in mystery. While the beast of Bodmin Moor remains an unsolved mystery, its legend continues to haunt the quiet moors of Cornwall. As twilight descends on Highgate Cemetery, a chilling presence lurks, waiting to feed the Highgate Vampire. Our tale begins in the swinging 60s in North London, where an eerie legend was born. The Highgate Cemetery, an imposing Victorian burial ground, became the epicenter of a peculiar urban legend that sent shockwaves through the city. The whispers began with sightings of a tall, dark figure with hypnotic, piercing eyes that seemed to glow in the darkness. This spectral figure was dubbed the Highgate Vampire. The reports were chilling. People claimed to feel a sudden chill when in the presence of this being. Animals, particularly foxes, were found lifeless and drained of blood. Some even reported being mesmerized by the creature trapped in a paralyzing trance. These eerie accounts sparked a mass hysteria among the local populace. Highgate was no longer a peaceful resting place. It had become a hunting ground for the undead. The media latched onto this mystery, fueling the frenzy with sensational headlines and stories. The public was gripped by fear and fascination. Vampire hunts became a bizarre yet common occurrence, with locals and thrill-seekers alike flocking to the cemetery armed with stakes and garlic. In the midst of this chaos emerged two men, each self-proclaimed vampire hunters, David Farrant and Sean Manchester. Their rivalry added another layer of intrigue to this already captivating tale. Both claimed to have seen the vampire and even held their own separate exorcisms. As with most urban legends, the Highgate vampire tale is shrouded in ambiguity. Skeptics argue that the sightings were nothing more than a product of overactive imaginations fueled by the media. Others, however, firmly believe in the vampire's existence, insisting that the creature still roams the cemetery after dusk. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the Highgate vampire remains a chilling tale that still captivates the imagination. The enigma of the Highgate vampire serves as a testament to the power of folklore, keeping us intrigued and reminding us that sometimes truth can be stranger than fiction. Imagine a knock at your door. You open it to find two children with pitch black eyes asking to be let in. You've just encountered the black eyed children. The eerie phenomenon known as the black eyed children first came to light in the mid nineties in Staffordshire, England. The encounters are always similar. Two seemingly normal children often dressed in outdated clothing appear at your doorstep or car window. Their most striking feature is their eyes, black as the night, devoid of any white. They ask in a monotone voice to be let in, but these are no ordinary children. They seem to possess a hypnotic ability compelling you to do as they ask. Yet an overwhelming sense of dread accompanies their presence, a primal fear that warns you something isn't right. The encounters are brief, often ending with the children disappearing as mysteriously as they appeared. But the unease they leave behind lingers, haunting the memory of those who've encountered them. There are many theories as to who or what these black-eyed children are. Some believe they are lost spirits, trapped between our world and the next, forever wandering and seeking help from the living. Others propose a more extraterrestrial origin, suggesting they might be aliens trying to blend in, albeit poorly, with humans. A more grounded theory proposes they are a manifestation of our deepest fears, given form by our collective consciousness. The black eyes symbolizing the unknown, the fear of letting something dangerous into our safe spaces, and the children representing innocence gone wrong. But irrespective of the theories, one thing remains consistent, the bone-chilling fear they instill. 
The dread they leave in their wake serves as a stark reminder of the unknown, of the thin line that separates our mundane reality from the inexplicable and the supernatural. Whether real or imagined, the black-eyed children continue to terrify those who hear their tales. In the shadowy corners of the internet, a modern monster was born, the Slender Man. This eerie entity, a tall, faceless figure in a black suit, made its first appearance in 2009 on the web forum Something Awful. The Slender Man was in fact the product of a photo editing contest, but this digital boogeyman soon took on a life of its own, becoming a viral sensation and a chilling symbol of our deepest fears. The Slender Man's lore spread like wildfire. It was said that he could elongate his arms and torso and had the ability to induce amnesia, disorientation and paralyzing fear in his victims. His preferred targets, children whom he would stalk, ensnare and eventually whisk away to an unknown fate. This online terror didn't stay confined to the world of fiction for long. The Slender Man quickly found his way into popular media, featuring in video games, films and even a web series. His image, once confined to the dark corners of the internet, was now on full display for the world to see. But the real-life implications of the Slender Man's lore were far more chilling than any game or movie. In 2014, in a shocking incident in the United States, two 12-year-old girls lured their friend into the woods and stabbed her 19 times, claiming that they did it to appease the Slender Man. This horrifying event brought the Slender Man's influence into the harsh light of reality, raising questions about the impact of digital folklore on impressionable minds. The Slender Man is not just a monster from the internet, he is a testament to the power of digital folklore, a grim reminder of how quickly and virally fear can spread in the digital age. He embodies our collective anxieties, our fears of the unknown, and the darkness that can lurk in the most innocuous of places. In the digital age, the Slender Man shows how quickly and powerfully urban legends can spread, leaving a trail of fear in their wake.